Okay, so we can also represent complex numbers in what's called polar form. Think about your imaginary and your real axis on an Argen diagram, and if we have a complex number, um, in this case we'll start with 1 plus i. We already know that that means it's one away from uh, the axis in each, uh, so from the origin in each direction. Um, we can find the uh, modulus, so the length of that line being root 2. You've seen that already as well. We can also talk about this angle here, the angle that it is away from that x-axis. So in this case it would be pi by 4, which you can find by your basic trigonometry. So here we have z being our complex number, the modulus of z is root 2. And this bit here is called the argument of z, which is um, given the notation of arg z. So the argument of z is the angle that's measured anti-clockwise from the positive real axis. So in this one, you'd have theta representing the argument of z being, again, anti-clockwise from the positive real axis. And here it would be this one. Now, we could actually go all the way around and still have, um, you know, the same line there. You could add two pi lots of um, however many times you want to go around and get the same, get to the same point. So, just like in, um, you know, your trig equations, you could get um, multiple solutions. You can with this as well. So, to sort out that sort of thing. For example, on this one, if you did another 2 pi around, you'd get um, the, the argument of z could also be 5 pi by 4. So we talk about the principal argument, and that means the value of theta between minus pi and pi. So in this case, on the, the blue one there, it's the pi by 4 would be our principal argument. On this one, this value of theta would be fine because that's between minus pi and pi. On this one over here, that's not the principal argument. This would actually be the principal argument here, going underneath it, so it would be a negative value. Okay, so we can define a complex number by its modulus and argument, and that's what's called polar form. So if we have this complex number here, where we've got these values on there of r, y, and x, and then our angle is theta. So our y value there using trigonometry would be the same as r sine theta. Our x would be r cos theta. So if we start with z being x plus i y and then replace x and y with uh, their equivalents in terms of r and theta, then we get r cos theta plus i r sine theta. We can take out a factor of r so that we get r cos theta plus i sine theta. And this is polar form. Okay, so for an example, 2 plus 3i, we're going to express it in polar form, so we need to think about what it looks like. So draw yourself a little sketch. Then the modulus will be the square root of 13. And then we need to work out that angle, which we um, keep things in radians usually for these questions, so that's 0 0.983. So in polar form, it looks like this. Now that can get a little tedious to write out. Sometimes we use an abbreviation, which I'll show you on this next example. So let's go for minus one minus root three i. So drawing a picture of that looks like this. So the modulus, we can work out as two. Now theta, we will be finding theta as it is on this little triangle labelled here, but that won't be our argument. So theta is pi by 3, just using our identities. But the argument of z is this other bit here labelled in the yellow, because it's the, the distance, the, the angle it is away from the positive x-axis. So our argument will be minus 2 pi by 3. Now writing that in polar form looks like this. And the abbreviation that I told you, we can use this um, CIS abbreviation, which when you read it out, you just read it as cis. So it's 2 cis minus 2 pi by 3, and um, that's a standard abbreviation to, to stand for the cos and i sine theta part of um, the polar form. Okay, um, going the other way around, so we're starting in polar form and we need to put it back into x plus iy form. So 
draw a picture of what it looks like, use that to work out some trigonometry to get our x and y values. So in this case, x equals root 2 cos pi by 4, so x will be 1. y will be root 2 sine pi by 4, and so in this one, y is 1 again. So z equals... Now, our x value is going in a negative direction, so looking at our, the x and the y that we just worked out, they were just distances, um, so we need to work out what they are in terms of coordinates. So one away on the negative side would be minus one, and then the one up on our imaginary scale will be an i. So our um, x plus i y form looks like minus one plus i. This form is sometimes called the Cartesian or rectangular form.